Picture this. You are a relatively unexperienced player that mostly plays Dark Tide on lower difficulties, like Malice or Below. You enjoy playing the game casually, mostly just messing around in pubs or with a group of friends, and you've never really tried taking on heresy or damnation. You're afraid that others will judge the way you play, and that if you won't perform well, you'll be blamed by some guy with over 2000 hours racked up on each of the classes individually that clearly has no form of social life. But, one day you overcome that fear and decide to queue up into your first heresy match, and oh my dear god emperor do the ranged enemies hurt now. You'll quickly realize that standing in the open while getting shot is a bad idea and that you can't just run into a group of shooters recklessly anymore without it ending badly. Moving from cover to cover and sliding to avoid getting peppered by last fire is your best bet, yet if you've decided to play as a school breaker you're likely gonna have a problem with the former. With how gigantic Ogrens are, it can be really hard to close the distance to a last patrol that's shooting at you from a distance. Most of the cover that the other characters can take advantage of is just plain unavailable to the Ogren. Like, how am I supposed to hide behind those small boxes on the Magistrati map for crying out loud? And don't get me started on getting to that one data interrogator on the consignment yard. Nope, I'm just gonna stay in this room, you guys can take care of this for me, I'm just gonna sit here and cry in a corner, it's fine. Because of that, most newer players pick up a slab shield as their melee option, and while I'd say that it's not a bad idea for learning the class, all they seem to do is this. Standing out in the open while surrounded by horde units, slash being in the line of sight of a gunner, and just blocking either until their teammates get rid of all of the threats for them, or until they inevitably get grabbed by a disabler. Most of the time this doesn't help anyone. Sure, there are times when it's a good idea to plant the shield on the floor and just tank damage for a bit, but it feels like some of you try to do this at every single opportunity, and at that point if I'm playing alongside a Skullbreaker behaving like this, it just feels like we're down a player. Also, oh, we got one of those organs. That's good, I ain't, I ain't footage for my video. <laughs> So, I'm here today to show you how to squeeze as much utility from the slab shield as you possibly can, which talents and ranged weapons pair best with it, and how to support your team by drawing aggro of enemy shooters and making space for the little ones. But first, a disclaimer. All of the clips that I've used in this video were recorded on Damnation, so the fifth and final base difficulty in the game. All of the advice I give here is based on how I like to play the game. I'm a very aggressive player, I tend to end up in my enemies' faces most of the time, and I try to utilize every bit of my equipment to its fullest potential. So if you have trouble keeping up with me, or if you have your own preferred way of playing as a shield ogren, feel free to share your strategy with us in the comments so that we can all learn together. Alright, disclaimer time's over, let's get on with it. Slab shields can only be used by ogrens. Obviously, but more importantly, they're restricted to the Skullbreaker class in the character creation screen, meaning that any new Ogren subclasses that may release in the future, like the Gunlugger for example, won't have access to them. The only slab shield that's currently in the game is the variant paired with the Mark II Battle Mall, not to be confused with the Mark I Power Mall that has been released in the Signal update. This means that you can't make it go shiny mode and make a funny noise while sending Poxwalkers into the air. Sorry to disappoint. Similar to Vermintide, you can block enemy projectiles with your shield if you're looking in the direction of the enemy that's currently shooting at you. You can only do so while facing the enemy. You can't block shots from behind like you can do with melee attacks, so be careful about your positioning when pushing up to a last patrol. The shield also has a special attack that makes you plant it in the ground in front of you, completely immobilizing you and heavily restricting your camera movement, but making it so that you don't lose stamina while blocking attacks. This applies to everything, from poxwalkers, to bruisers, to ranged attacks, to crusher overheads, and even bosses like the Plague Ogren and the Demon Host. Tanking Demon Hosts like that is a very common strategy in pubs, as it's a great way to both help friendly psychers complete one of the most ridiculous penances in the game, and to clear a host that's either really hard to pass by or that got pulled by accident. If you ever join a match in progress and see a Psyker and an Ogryn killing a host like that, then for the love of Christ, don't damage it. It's a really good way to piss off your teammates and possibly get kicked from the team. Hey, this is X-Ray from the Far Future speaking. I'm just quickly interrupting my own video to tell you that as of patch number 9 you can no longer get that penance done in pubs. 
I'm still leaving this part of the video in, just in case Fatrak ever reverts this change, and so that people with pre-mates know that it's possible to get that penance done in such a way as long as you go into a private match. Please, Fatrak, revert this change. Locking solo players out of getting penances done is really bad for the lifespan of the game. Alright, back to the video. Also, if you're the shield bearer, don't just randomly pull demon hosts. Always, and I mean always, ask and warn your teammates before pulling one regardless of if you're trying to help your friend farm a penance, or if you're just getting one for the sake of convenience. Just like with regular blocking, you can block all melee attacks around you while using the special attack. But keep in mind that you can still get grabbed by disablers, flamers can still hit you through your shield, and you can still get shot in the back. So be careful about your positioning when planting your shield. If, for example, you can clearly see that a trapper is coming for you, then stop holding the special attack button immediately and get ready to dodge. Keep in mind that scab stalkers and both shotgunner types tend to slowly walk towards you while you're blocking shots from them. If you ignore them for long enough, it's likely that they'll walk around you and shoot you in the back, so be prepared to react accordingly once they enter your personal space. Speaking of your personal space, you need to know how to keep your enemies away from it. Now would be a great time to go through all the attack combinations that you have to work with when using a slap shield. In comparison to other melee weapons, you lose out on a lot of damage, but you gain the utility of the special attack, the shield bashes and the ability to block incoming shots. For most people, including myself, that lack of damage is a huge deal breaker when it comes to picking the slap shield over something like a cleaver, but I still keep one in reserve for those pub matches where I queue into a very open map with little to no cover for ogrins and we don't have anyone on the team that can deal with shooters. Before we get to the more complex parts of using a shield, I need to tell you about the push attack. This is something that I don't think most people know about, but the push attack on the slap shield is your main way to deal single target damage with it. It's not amazing against death her enemies, but it's enough to kill enemy shooters, gunners and shotgunners with relative ease. Since you're gonna stagger most enemies with the push itself before hitting them with the strike down, I'd consider keeping an eye out on the Skullcrusher Blessing for some extra damage. Your light attack chain consists of 4 swings with the maul. The first two of them are classed as relentless, while the other two are vanguard attacks. They're very similar to each other stat-wise. The main differences between them are that the relentless attacks do more stagger and have a slightly better angle for hitting multiple enemies, while the vanguard attacks do more damage and it's slightly easier to aim for headshots with them. Most of the time you're just gonna be spamming them while fighting hordes. You'll mostly just be throwing enemies around rather than killing them, so try to save doing actual damage to your ranged weapon if it's suited for the job. Performing a heavy attack lets you shield bash your opponents. This is one of the many parts of this weapon that most players seem to misunderstand. They're really slow and they don't have infinite cleave compared to Vermintide's shields, which makes using them on hordes a very bad idea. They also barely do any damage, so you shouldn't use them for single target damage either. Their strength lies in the massive amounts of stagger that they inflict on any form of elite unfortunate enough to find itself in front of you. The first shield bash in the chain is strong enough to throw any enemy on the floor for about 3-4 to four seconds, making them completely harmless and defenseless until they get up. You can make a lot of space for your team when a wave of elites crashes into you by doing the first heavy attack and then block cancelling just to do it again. I don't recommend using the second heavy attack at all, as its stats are much worse than the first ones, seemingly for no reason. When it comes to single target damage combos, just spamming the push attack seems to work fine for me, but it drains your stamina quickly. If you know that you're gonna need some of it to block ranged attacks or to go for a revive, you should do a push attack into two light attacks instead. You'll still do solid enough damage to deal with shooters and gunners that way without blowing through your stamina bar. Managing your stamina is important for this weapon, as you'll need it to block enemy shots while closing the distance. The good news is that taking ranged damage gives you a burst of stamina back even if it only hits your toughness. This means that if your block gets broken you'll get some stamina back from getting shot, which more often than not will let you get out of the bad situation that you got yourself into. It's still better to avoid getting staggered at all, so don't just walk up to enemies, your stamina bar will be gone in seconds. Don't forget that it's possible to dodge left and right in order to avoid some shots while you're slowly moving up to your target. You should try to avoid sprinting with the shield out, as your stamina will get melted in seconds due to the slap shield's bad sprint efficiency. Try to remember to switch to your ranged weapon if you're just running around the map without worrying about taking shots. 
That way, if you run the corner and see that there's a bunch of shooters lined up, you'll have enough stamina left to either engage them or to get away. Time to talk about ranged weapons. In my original script I was gonna go over every single ranged option in the Ogren's arsenal, but there's been some changes since then and this video has become a massive roadblock for me when it comes to making guides, so I'll just go over the best choices instead to save you some time and for the sake of my sanity. Since you can't do damage to Carapace armor with any of the shield's attacks, you'll need a secondary that allows you to deal with crushers. This leaves us with the Grenadier Gauntlet, the Rumbler and the Ripper Guns with the Can Opener Blessing. I personally dislike pairing Ripper Guns with the shield as they don't have enough ammo to use them as a primary weapon and that's kind of what we're looking for. That being said, it's possible to shield bash a crusher and stab him with the bayonet attack while he's getting up to apply this tax of brutalness to it, so you can definitely make it work. You can also shred hordes in seconds as long as you can position yourself well. Try to keep an eye on your ammo supply and don't waste it trying to shoot specials that are outside of your range. Leave them to your backliners if possible and focus on making space for them instead. The Grenadier Gauntlet is an almost perfect ranged weapon for a shield Ogryn, or rather a Bulgrin in this case if you want to roleplay. It's great at special sniping and it has access to the Shattering Impact Blessing, which in combination with a proper sat roll and the heavyweight talent lets you 4 shot crushers with ranged attacks. This is a huge breakpoint, as you won't have to reload to secure a kill on one of them from a distance. It's even possible to free shot them with the old fire punches, so I recommend to start using them whenever you're trying to conserve ammo and you're in boxing range with one. The biggest problem that you'll face with this combo is the lack of an efficient way to clear hordes. The gauntlet has awful area damage even with a maxed out blast radius stat, so you'll be forced to use your melee for that purpose. Still, it's a great choice and it's hard not to recommend pairing it with a shield. It's my go-to choice for queuing into pubs where I don't know what teammates I'm gonna get. Another sniper, I'm blocking him. I forgot I have a gauntlet, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the Rumbler. Once again we have access to Shattering Impact, which lets us kill crushers in 3 hits with the heavyweight feat equipped on level 10. This weapon excels in fighting against hordes mixed with elites. You can fire the grenade into an elite enemy surrounded by horde units to apply stacks of brutalness and do some direct damage to it, and once the grenade lands it'll kill horde units and stagger everything around the target, including other elites. It really feels like you have access to infinite veteran grenades with that weapon equipped. If you ever wanted to roleplay as an artillery cannon, the Rambler is gonna be your best option. You can even use it to snipe certain specials at a distance as long as you know how to aim it. The only problem with the Rumbler is the bad ammo economy, but fortunately that's solved as long as you have a veteran on the team that you can maintain coherency with. Because of one of the passives available to the sharpshooter, you get one full grenade back every time either of you kills an elite or a special, and that happens constantly on higher difficulties. It gets to the point where I don't even grab ammo pickups unless everyone else is nearly full and I'm the only one that needs it. If you pick the Rumbler as a ranged option, then try not to hog all the ammo and be very careful about using it without having a veteran on the team. All of those ranged weapons share a downside that I haven't mentioned, and it's that they're all very inefficient when it comes to killing mutants. Because of that you should save your boxes specifically for dealing with them in bad situations. Don't just throw them at the first mutant you see though. Save them for when you're in trouble and it's actually posing a danger to you or a teammate, not when there's no other enemies around and the person who got grabbed will barely take any damage. Otherwise boxing pox bursters is also recommended if you're not using the gauntlet. And by boxing I mean hitting them with a box, just to clarify. I don't take any responsibility for any of you slapping pox bursters with your hands. It's also possible to blow them up with the Rumbler's explosion, but it can be a bit inconsistent about whether or not they get staggered with a direct hit. So if I'm fighting something else and I see a box burster coming in, I'd rather hit it with a box for a guaranteed kill. And now it's finally time to talk about the talents. Oh, feats, sorry, force of habit. I tend to center my build around coherency and general team support. I use Lynchpin on level 5, as I don't think that either of the feats that require you to score a heavy attack pair well with the shield. 
The Confident Strike Blessing on my weapon and the level 30 non-stop violence feat complemented really well, as they let me both stay alive and passively support my teammates at the same time without much of an issue. Towering Presence on level 15 also pairs really well with it, although if you don't have trouble maintaining coherency then Bullfighter might be a better pick for you, as it enables you to be a bit more aggressive with your charge and it lets you use it to replenish toughness more often. Heavyweight is a must pick on level 10, both for the extra damage from our ranged weapon against Ogrins and the damage reduction from Reapers in particular, which can be pretty handy when you're pushing into them. I don't think it's worth taking any of the other feats here. The bleed stacks can help out a bit with melee damage, but heavyweight still outclasses them by a lot. And bombs away, while fun, is completely pointless to bring with a shield build, especially if you're using the Rambler. Save your boxes, lads. Hard as Nails allows you to secure revives more effectively while tanking damage, which can mean the difference between losing a whole bunch of health or barely getting your toughness broken while under enemy fire. Lastly, Payback Time is the strongest option in this row. I don't like that you have to take damage to trigger it, even if it's just toughness, but after the nerfs to Raging Bull I don't think it's worth taking anything else for a shield build on level 25. Before I close this video off, let me give you some general gameplay tips for playing as a tank Ogryn. For starters, if you're slowly pushing up to a bunch of gunners or shooters, you shouldn't go for a frontal assault. If you go into the middle of a crowd like this, you're just gonna get shot from all directions at once, which will make you either end up on the floor or with a massive loss of health points. Try to approach your enemies from the side and slowly weed them out one by one while minimizing your damage taken. Even if it takes you a while to kill them, you're still taking pressure off your teammates, which lets them focus on other threats or help you out with the shooters. If you see any form of danger in the area that can disrupt you from going after them, then you should stay with your team and play passively before going in. This includes stuff like hordes, melee elites, disablers or anything that's coming towards you instead of sitting behind cover and taking pot shots at you. Overall, just be careful and use your brain. I know that this kinda goes against everything that Ogrins are about, but it's really not that hard. You need to know how to recognize good opportunities to go in and realize when you should back off into safety. It's very easy to get down far away from your spot by playing like this, so if you're not sure when you can get away with straying from the team, then just play passively and stay in coherency. Also, keep in mind that leaving coherency for an extended period of time means that the game will spawn disablers that will go after you specifically, so if you hear a hound howling in the distance, you better prepare yourself for it. Outside of tanking demon hosts, there's three other situations where you should be using your special attack. The first one is when it's too dangerous for you to push into shooters, but there's no other threats anywhere, like when you're low on health or when there's simply too many enemies firing at you. Going into the open and bracing with your shield to draw their attention to yourself can lift a lot of pressure off your team if you position yourself correctly. You just have to make sure that there's no disablers around and that nothing can hit you in the back. Keep in mind that if you're blocking shots for long enough, enemies will eventually switch targets and start firing at someone else. So wait for those opportunities to either close the distance, hit them with your ranged weapon, or relocate. The second situation is when you're in the middle of closing the distance to a last patrol and you get low on stamina. If you position yourself in a way where you can't get shot in the back, you can plant your shield and just wait until the heretics stop firing into you to regen some of it and continue pushing ahead. Your stamina regen stops while blocking damage like this, but you won't lose any of it either, so we can just wait until the enemies switch targets or until they have to reload. The third situation is when you're waiting in an elevator and you're just spamming the special attack button to kill some time. Outside of that, there aren't many moments when it comes in handy really. Most of the time it's better to be aggressive and throw some damage or stagger around, rather than sit in a corner and wait for your team to do everything for you. One last thing about planting your shield. You can still mark enemies while braced, and you can see marked specials and elites through it, which helps you out a lot with tunnel vision caused by the visor. Shield ogrins can be excellent spotters, so don't be afraid to use the attack button while having your shield planted. If more people were attacking enemies in general, the world would be a better place. And this doesn't just go for shield ogrins, by the way. And to close this section of the video off, don't neglect your charge. 
You're mostly gonna be staggering elites with your shield, true, but the charge still packs a lot of utility on its own, especially with non-stop violence equipped on level 30. Most of the time you're gonna be saving it to get a burst of toughness back from running enemies over, but if you've got plenty of it in the bank you can use it to open up bulwarks from the front, or as a mobility tool that helps you reach your teammates while fighting a horde. Just remember that it exists. Alright, looks like that's it. That's all I've learned about the slab shield during the course of making this video. Truth be told, I wouldn't use it in shock troop gauntlet matches, as that lack of damage can really screw you over. But I have top scored with it multiple times on regular high intensity maps before, so this build is not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The added survivability is great for ogrins that are trying to get into higher difficulties or play on more open maps. Still, I feel like this weapon deserves some changes or buffs. It feels incredibly clunky to use and I was really far out of my comfort zone while using it, which is the reason why it took me so long to make this guide. Fortunately, I've heard rumors about a shield rework coming out at some point, and I really hope that this guide will be relevant by then. I wouldn't be surprised if we got more marks of the shield too, although that's just speculation on my part. If there was a smaller, more mobile shield variant with a better weapon coming out, I'd be pretty excited for it, honestly. For now, I'm signing off. Hope I've helped some of you discover a new, fresh way to play as a Skullbreaker. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.